Welcome to Parish and Community. My guest today is Father Tom Green, who is the provincial for the Jesuits of the Central and Southern Province. So, Father Tom, thanks for taking some time for us today. You're very welcome. Good to be with you, Angela. So tell me, I'm fairly new to Jesuit goings and comings, and I don't know all of the details. So for those like me who may not be all that clear on the administrative what have you, what does a provincial do? Yeah, well, it's essentially it's the most powerful position in the whole world. So just know that. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Ah, it is. So every, we're four provinces in the United States. That's how we're divided up. And these regions are called provinces and they're led by a provincial. So essentially, um, I, this is where what I'm going to say always limps because I'll say I'm in charge of uh, the Jesuits and our works in 13 states and Puerto Rico and Belize. Now, where that limps is I say I'm in charge of, as you know, you have a pastor and you have Katie, you have Father Dan White is pastor and you have Katie there who run the parish. But I have the overall responsibility for cura apostolica. So the care, it's a Latin term meaning the care of these works that we have, these apostolates, whether it's a parish or a high school or a university. And then I have the cura personalis, the care of the Jesuits. Um, and in a certain sense, although not directly, I have a care for the, for the lay colleagues who, who direct the works and work in the works and the apostolates that we have. So we are 13 states, as I said. We're 355 Jesuits, more or less, uh, which makes us the ninth largest province in the world. Hmm. And so it's, um, we, we went through a process of consolidation, mm. reconfiguration. And so we, the New Orleans province and the Missouri province joined six years ago. Okay. And so now we have the central and southern province. So anyway, that's in a, a basic way of outlining what I do as provincial. Just kind of a homecoming, wouldn't it be? Because back in the day, New Orleans and St. Louis would have been very much kind of the same territory way back in the day. Right, that's right. And then, of course, but it, a homecoming and, uh, you know, I thought you were going to say uh, something. Missouri province was, was part of um, what's now Chicago and Detroit, which is joined mm. with, uh, into the Midwest province. But certainly New Orleans and Missouri are linked by the Mississippi River and a lot of U.S. history. Yeah, sure. So, and you found out about your own appointment in, I understand, kind of an unusual way. Can you talk about that? That is true. I, I happened to be in Rome for a meeting, and um, I knew that my name, on, and along with others, had been put forward to Father General. We don't, we don't have an election in the Jesuits. We uh, put together what's called a turna, a list of names for Father General to consider. So I knew that that turna had gone to Rome, but I didn't know uh, you know, I was minding my own business in Belize, and uh, so I was in Rome for a meeting, and I got a text from, uh, an email from the current, the then provincial, Ron Mercier, saying, can we talk this afternoon? And I thought, oh, that's, that's not a good sign. No, <laughs> never is. So uh, I emailed back, and it was about 1130 Rome time, and I said, yeah, I can do that, and um, I said, I didn't even bother to ask. I guess I didn't want to know. I just said, I'll, I'll talk to you then. And then I went to meet a Jesuit for lunch and when I, who works in Rome. And when I got to the front door to meet him, he said, oh, we have to go see Father General very quickly. And that's when I knew my battleship was sunk. And I said, okay. So anyway, I, we, he said, but he's having a meeting with someone. So we ran up the stairs to Father General's private dining area where he was having this meeting. And we went in and he told me, um, you know, congratulations, I've named you provincial. And um, yeah, no matter, even though you know it might happen, it's, it's still a little bit uh, sobering and a shock. And then, um, see, the other part of it was I had come from Belize and I was buying a miter and a, a crozier for the, uh, excuse me, and a zucchetta for the, for the bishop. Mm. That was my lunchtime task was to purchase that for him. And so the general congratulated me and I said, well, I have to go run now. I'm going to go buy a miter and a zucchetta. But don't think I'm getting it for the job. I'm just getting this for the bishop and believe <laughs> He got a kick out of that. Now, do you have any say in whether your name is actually put on the turna? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Uh, people say, you know, oh, congratulations for accepting this. Uh, you know, and I said, well, 
you know, it, it wasn't put to me that way. No, right. I mean, essentially that if there was some reason that you felt you were incapable of doing the, uh, taking on the role, then you can certainly let them know. But um, no, it's something that, you know, really every Jesuit is, is available for. Sure. And if you say, I don't feel like I'm up to the task, then they'll say, well, that shows that you are up to the task. Right? Yeah, that's right. There's no way out. That puts you in good company when you say that. <laughs> and you've become, you've begun your time as provincial in the COVID era, and that's obviously what we're still uh, in. Do you right. have any sense of how that has affected your experience in this first year? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, uh, people ask and I say, well, I don't know what it's like to be provincial outside of COVID. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I really don't have a lot to compare to. I would say this, though, the, the, the curse of it has been that, you know, yeah, I don't get to meet people in person. So generally, I would be visiting all the different cities and all, and all the men. And, and as we all know in Zoom, it's, it's been wonderful to connect with people and to stay connected and to be able to have some meetings. But, but you really want to be with people in person. So that's been a limitation. That's been the sort of the curse of it, not COVID for me, not being able to meet with the Jesuits in person and to, or even to visit the, the schools, the high schools, universities, the parishes, all of our works. Um, yeah. The blessing of it in a way has been that uh, I really don't like traveling all the time. So going in and out of airports and, you know, being in a different community each night, a different bed, having to find, you know, what kind of coffee they make? Do I like it? You know, yeah. do they have, do they have the, the perfect you know, coffee mix that I want? No, most no. of the time, not the cereal that I like. Oh, see how, see my suffering is tremendous. I can tell I'm driving you to tears, but yeah. anyway. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to it actually. Now I'm, I'm vaccinated. A lot of the communities are, are vaccinated now. And so I'm looking at yes. starting to make some in-person visits. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Now, this is the quiz portion of the interview, um, because I understand there's something called the apostolic preferences that are supposed to guide how Jesuits are, like, like I guess, a strategic plan kind of way. T talk to me about that and what that, how that guides the province, too, because the, the, it's universal apostolic preferences that go over all of the Jesuits and all of their That's works, right? right? That's right. And these are universal, so they would cover Jesuits in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the universe. So right. different planets. So just be aware of that. Um, book recommendation, The Swallow, right? Jesuits there in you space. Go. Mm -hmm. That's right. No, it's a really good question. You know, what I was in last week, I was in provincial school, what they call provincial school, and uh, or that's the, the nickname for it. But this was supposed to take place, place in Rome shortly after I started, but for COVID reasons, it was canceled twice and they decided to do it online. But we had a, a period with um, a session with Father General to talk about the universal apostolic preferences. And he reminded us that, you know, these are, um, these are given to us really by the Holy Father. Mm. That the process for the developing them was, it was a, a worldwide discernment by Jesuits and colleagues about issues of importance and challenges and opportunities facing the Society of Jesus. But all of that was then written down by the various provinces around the world, sent into the conferences in each of the major, so the conferences are the sort of the major groupings, the European Conference, African Conference, Asia Pacific, United States and Canada. So all that went sort of, if you will, up to Rome, up to Father General, uh, and then was distil distilled and discerned into four apostolic preferences, um, which in general terms are um, uh, accompanying, uh, showing people the pathway to God, that's the first one, and accompanying the poor and marginalized, uh, walking with youth, and caring for our common home. So four, four general areas, but those were then brought to Pope Francis and said, you know, what do you think about these? He took them, he prayed with them, and he came back and said, yes, I mission this uh, Society of Jesus to these things. So it's really a contemporary articulation of our mission to mm. incorporating that into our work. A couple of other things to say about it that, that Father General reminded us that, that and, and the first comes from Pope Francis, which is that if you don't do the first one right, which is be prayerful and show people the way to God, that, that the others will not follow. Right. So that's, that's very important. But the, the analogy he likes to use is that, that these four 
uh, preferences are fingers on a hand. Mm. And they all fit together. And so someone said, well, what about the thumb? You know, if these are the preferences with them, he said, the thumb are our colleagues and mm. collaborating. Mm. And so that's the hand. Mm. Um, so I sort of like that as a, as a visual image, but it's a nice reminder that we don't just say, well, I work with youth and, oh, my apostolate works with care for our common home, that, that, that all of these come together. And the second thing that they're integral, integrated, you know, and the second thing uh, that he that he mentioned was that, and I think this is particularly important for Jesuits in the U.S. is that these are not simply tasks; right. they're orientations. Right, uh, right. You can be very task oriented. Okay, what do we need to build and start? And it's more a way of you know, yes, that's important, but this is really a way in which we live our life mm -hmm. and our whole life whether we're working in our apostolate or outside of it is geared towards these apostolic preferences you know how i care for the common home is not care for our common home and environment is not just something i do when i punch in at work <laughs> it's it's how i live outside of that it's how i live in community it's it's how i uh you know how i use resources outside of my work as much as inside of my work so hmm. a few comments about the uaps I also understand that the um, Jesuits are starting a conversation, or I'm sure it's been an ongoing conversation, but it's, uh, there's a more deliberate process that's happening right now because of a new commission, I think, on, on uh, women and the ways that that is connected in with the ministry, the ways that you work with women and uh, are connected in with these ministries. Can, do you have any, any more info on that than I do? Correct. Well, the, there's two ways, two things to say about that. One is, yes, that the, the Curia, Father General and the, the Curia in Rome, our headquarters, has um, organized, named uh, a, a women's committee. Hmm. And that's just within the, maybe the past month that that was announced. So I, I, to be honest, I don't have the whole mission statement for that sure. group in my mind, but um, I know it's an advisory uh, committee for Father General to help them look at the situation of women in our apostolates and and outside of our apostolates in the world and how the mission responds to that. Perhaps more particularly, I can speak to it in, in our own province, in the UCS province, which is that I formed, after I was named, shortly after I was named, I formed a women's advisory committee. Mm. And it is made up of, of women and Jesuits from around the province. And I tried to get good representation, not only from our staff, people who work on the province staff, but also across our apostolates so that we would have a woman who worked in a high school or from a university, a woman from a parish. So we have a sort of a representation across our apostolates and then geographic representation. We're such a large, large multicultural province. Right. So trying to cover all those bases. Um, and, and it's been great. We, we meet quarterly. So we've had two meetings thus far. And the first was simply just for them to share their experience of being a woman working in a Jesuit apostolate and the joys and consolations and blessings that come with that. Uh, some of the things that have been challenging, some of the hurtful things. Uh, it was a beautiful, beautiful conversation. The second meeting, we, we got together and talked about, um, uh, well, we added a couple more members and we, so we had some more introductions, but we began to talk about what might be helpful to us as we begin our work to do. And the, the idea surfaced that a retreat would be helpful. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now they're organizing women's retreat for, for specifically for women and Jesuits uh, who work in the province. So that this can kind of, this sort of, and it'll be a bit of a, a mix of a conversation and a retreat, you know. So it's more of that sharing that took place in our first meeting, meeting of the committee can happen and then some, some prayerful time. So it's an exciting, at least for me, it's an exciting uh, development in the province and something I'm happy to participate in. Wonderful. Tell me about uh, your own call. How did you discern that you were being called to the Jesuits and, and are there particular holy men and women that have inspired you? Oh yeah, so um, well it's a long story but I'll give you the bridge version. Um, you know I went to, I did not have a typical vocation I guess. I entered late, I was 34. Mm. I entered after practicing law for a while and then getting out of the practice of law and deciding I would drive my car to Alaska. And when I got back to New Orleans, I had my life figured out. Um, 
ended up stopping for coffee and why it's a long way to drive from the worlds to Alaska and, and yes, it is. The sharpest knife in the drawer and we didn't have Google Ways or maps or anything like that so uh, today I probably would have shot down that idea but anyway after stayed in Wyoming working for a couple of years mm -hmm. at a school for uh, low functioning underprivileged kids worked with Boys Hope Girls Hope for a couple of years and began studying theology at St. Louis University and sort of the combination of working with the poor and studying theology led me to an entrance to the Society of Jesus and led me to, to entering. So that's, a, that's the abridged version of the vocation story. In terms of the holy men and women, my goodness, there are too many to name, but you know, every vocation that we have, I find um, both entering the Society of Jesus, but then sustaining my vocation, it's really so many people. And you know, the UAPs, we say that the first one is showing people the pathway to God, and the second one is, um, as they're listed, is, is walking with the poor and marginalized. And I can just point to so many uh, refugees and immigrants, people that I've worked with, particularly when I was doing immigration and refugee work, uh, who showed me the pathway to God, you know, and yeah. showed me my vocation. So, um, you know, they're the holy men and women, the Jesuits that I know, but there's all these just countless, just great, holy, faithful people that I had the chance to minister to, thinking I was ministering to them, but they really uh, showed me the way to God and, and strengthened my vocation. It's a, a good place to end it. Father Tom, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Have a great, prayerful, and restful, and consoling Holy Week. And great to be with you. Thank you. All right. Take care.